When you write authorization rules for your software, how do you know they're gonna work? Are you gonna manually test them every time you make a change? Log in as different users to verify that they're able to execute the functions they should be allowed to? I don't have time for that, which is why I'm such a strong advocate for unit testing authorization checks. I would rather leverage a testing framework such as XUnit to verify the authorization rules I've created. Now this is the third part in a series on entity-based authorization or resource-based authorization. And I'm going to show you how to write unit tests for authorization handlers and authorization policies. So this is the third in a series on resource-based authorization or entity-based authorization. And today I'm gonna to be describing how to write unit tests for authorization handlers and authorization policies. I'm Jeff Zerline. I'm a SQL DBA and a software developer. And I'm here to tell you about some of the tips and the tricks that I've picked up over the years. You can visit my blog at betterwithcode.com and learn more about some of the projects that I've been working on. But let's get started. So let's start by looking at how to write unit tests for an authorization handler. Now, just for a quick recap, an authorization policy is composed of one or more authorization requirements, and each requirement could have one or more authorization handlers. So I'm going to start at the bottom and write a unit test for the finest grain component in this mechanism. As an example, I have an authorization handler that needs to determine if the user is the creator of an employee review. And its job is to look at the user in the review and return an authorization context. Now that context can have one of three outcomes, has succeeded, has failed, or neither. And it's perfectly fine for an authorization handler to not return succeeded or failed. We have an authorization handler that we need to test, so let's break down how we can go about that. Our system under test in this case is going to be the user is creator of review handler. And we're going to actually want to test the handle requirement async function. So that's the one we're gonna call. Ideally, we'd have a function that we could provide data and we would get back a result from the processing as a return parameter, but that's not the case here. The first parameter that gets piped in is the context. And that context has two relevant pieces of data. The first is the user in the form of a claims principle and that has all the metadata about the user. And, and the second is the result of the evaluation. And it comes in the form of the has succeeded property. So depending on the employee review and the context.user property, we should be able to assert the value of the has succeeded uh, response. Now, those of you with an eagle eye might notice that there's another parameter that's getting piped into handle requirement async, and that is the requirement. Now, this handler can be used with multiple authorization requirements, so it really shouldn't have an effect on the outcome of our test. But the key to that is that when we set up this test, the only authorization handler associated with that particular requirement needs to be the one we're testing. We don't need, we don't want to have any other authorization handlers as part of that requirement. So let's take a quick peek at the logic in the handler. I'm getting the user ID from the claims and comparing it to the employer reviews creator ID property. And when that happens, I mutate the context by calling succeed. All right, so here's our test, users creator of review test. And in this case, I'm using X unit. I'm gonna need a couple pieces of data to perform my unit test. And one of those is a user. So I've created a function called get new claims principle, and that will help me construct a new user uh, in the form of a claims principle. I've also got some content, uh, constants I've defined. Uh, an employee ID, a creator ID, and a human resource ID. And those are basically just a way for me to keep track of some identifiers uh, when I do these unit tests. Then the other thing I need is an employee review. And that employee review will have a creator ID and an employee ID. And so I'm just gonna use those constants that I defined a second ago. All right, like I mentioned, we're using XUnit here. So I've actually got a fact attribute on the test function and that just allows XUnit to identify which functions are tests. And the first thing I need to do for a unit test is do the arrange portion, and that would be uh, creating some claims. And in this case, I need a claim for the user ID that's going to match up with the creator ID. So I've created that and passed it into my function, so I end up with a claims principal object called user. Now the authorization handler context is needed to pass into the uh, handle async function. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. And in this case, I'm gonna to have to pass in a list of authorization requirements and I'll utilize the user can view review requirement so that 
the authorization handler would be part of it. And I can just pass in my user that I created and the employee review that's defined uh, earlier. All right, so now I get to around to the act part. And the first thing I need to do is create my system under test. And that's going to be a user as creator of review handler. And I'm going to pass in the I authorization requirement uh, that's needed uh, to uh, define that authorization handler. And all I have to do now is to pass in the auth context to the handle async function. And that will do the evaluation. Now to do the assert portions, we're gonna to have to go ahead and look at the authorization handler context and determine if has succeeded was called. So I can just do an assert is true for has succeeded on the authorization context handler. And if I run this, there we go, it's passed. All right, if you're still watching this video, you probably are liking it. So hit the like button and actually just hit the subscribe button because I plan on making a whole lot more videos on things about authorization, SQL Server, .NET development. So you might as well have those pop up in your feed because you'll want to hear those too. All right, so the next scenario we need to tackle is how are we going to unit test authorization policies? To do that, let's take a look at the authorization service and more specifically, the system under test, which is going to be the authorize async function on that service. All right, so the authorize async function is gonna take in three properties. It'll take in a claims principle, which would be our user. It'll take in a resource or an entity, which is of type object, and it will have a policy name. So for our unit test, we're going to be able to go ahead and set these three different values and pipe them into the function and get out a authorization result. Now we can do an assert against the authorization result to make sure that our function or policy in this case is behaving as we expect. So even though that authorization service is going to be the system under test, the thing we're really testing is the policies. And so when we look at our employer review policies, you can see we have static functions that will return back those policies. And we've also got a function called add auth handlers. And it's the combination of those two functions that are going to make the policies work. So it's important that when we do our unit test, we invoke both of those functions so that we set it up the same way we'd be setting it up in our application. All right, so let's take a look now at the unit test for the uh, employee review policies. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is create an authorization service. So in the constructor of our test, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call a helper method uh, that is going to set up some of the base services needed by the default authorization service in the authorization framework, things like logging. Um, so that'll go ahead and get that started. And then really the important part here is that I'm going to call my employee review policies and add in the policies by the specific name and include the uh, method to add all the authorization handlers. So this is a little bit of extra plumbing that I would normally want to have in a unit test, uh, but it does mean that I'm testing all of the authorization handler uh, library that is included and that you're using in your application. So I, I kind of feel like it's worthwhile and it's gonna save me a ton of time to write some mocks. So I don't wanna really do that in this instance. So now we can go ahead and take a look at a little bit of the setup. It's gonna look a lot like the setup we used for the authorization handlers. And that's that we'll have a function to create a new claims principle with the, princ with the claims that we need to do the test. And we've also got an employer review and we can set a creator ID, an employee ID, um, and a human resource ID if we needed it. Uh, and so now our tests are gonna be very straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and create a set of claims that we need for our user. We're going to get that new claims principle object, and we're gonna go ahead and call the authorization service, authorize async, and we're just gonna pipe in the user, we're gonna pipe in the review, and then we're also going to pipe in the name of the policy. And in this case, we can go ahead and reference that employee review policy file where it's got the, the names, the strings that represent the policies. Uh, so once we get that back, we're gonna have uh, an allowed value, which is the authorization result. And we can just check to see if that succeeded property is set. And so very simple, tight little unit test really and the setup that we had to do in the constructor can be used over and over for the remainder of the test. And so we can have a whole bunch of tests in here uh, and they're all very straightforward. So I think this design 
is really easy to use. It just takes a little bit of setup. And it means that you need to go ahead and configure your policies, not in your, your um, startup CS file, but in a separate file. So you can go ahead and, and test against those. It's a big win for keeping your policies organized and managing the uh, dependency injection for authorization handlers. All right, so this has been the final part of a three-part series on authorization, and there has been a ton of code that I've covered. So I've uploaded that to GitHub. I'll put the link in the comments down below. So or actually the description, the description down below. So take a look at it. And uh, if you have any ideas or thoughts, please put that as a comment in on this video. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. It's always great to get some new ideas from other people. Uh, and if you want to watch one of the other two videos, I'll put a reference up here and up here so you can take a look at those as well if you haven't seen them already. Hope you have a great day. Bye.